I see it as a fight for our future generations. I want them to be able to enjoy the marine environment as much as we enjoy it now. Trying to get as much of this junk out and improving that in the marine environment for the creatures that live in it is, is critical for us and is critical for our future. Ghost fishing is when the redundant nets that are left in place continue to fish and the cycle of fishing is still continuing in a ghost capacity. So you've got dead creatures already in a net, live creatures feed on the dead fish and creatures in the net and entrap themselves and the cycle continues on and on, it's quite a devastating cycle. Internationally it's a, uh, it's a huge problem with commercial fishing nets etc. For us locally, uh, we're dealing primarily with sort of more marine debris, bottles, cans, shopping trolleys, plastics, etc. Uh, we try and remove as much of that from the marine environment as we possibly can with each event which we hold monthly. Typically we'll dive for about an hour. In winter, obviously it's a bit cold, so we don't want to dive too long. During that time, they'll fill their catch bags with as much as they possibly can glass bottles, fishing lines, hook sinkers, whatever they come across, and that will get ferried back to the shore crew who are waiting on the shore for the rubbish to be um, hauled up on shore. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. When all the rubbish comes up from the ocean, gets dumped into the decredit station, me and my team will go through, we'll remove all the animals out of it and make sure that when the rubbish goes back to the tip, it's not uh, full of life and that nothing gets wasted. Five bottles. Yes, come on, come on. This Good one child. is a baby common octopus or the Māori octopus. Oh, Third largest species in the world. Find this all over New Zealand. This was inside one of these bottles here. So this is what's swimming around in Oriental Bay in our Wellington Harbour. So most of the animals will just go back to the wild, get returned back to the ocean. Every now and again we'll find some animals that are really awesome and what they'll do is they'll go back to the Island Bay Marine Education Centre. They end up being put on display. So we can show to the public what's actually living in our rubbish in the Wellington Harbour. Because a lot of people never actually get their head underwater. On our dives, uh, the process to remove the rubbish is we will attach some lift bags, which is a giant gas-filled bag, which creates point, uh, positive buoyancy on the object. The object will head to the surface, our um, highly capable free diving team will swoop in there, grab it, bring it back to shore, where our shore crew will take over. So we've got another chitin and a cushion star. And what's the issue for them being in the clone? Well, it's mainly that this isn't their natural habitat. So this plastic and everything will eventually start to break down. Obviously what, the, what it's made out of will be leaching out into the waters. Also a lot of the animals, say oh, seaweeds and things will start to grow on them. But obviously that's not their natural uh, substance to be attached to. So you get excited about the stuff you find and at the same time, like, man, why can't these people stop? But particularly when you're finding repeated cuplids and straws and stuff. Last time we pulled up a crab that was so tangled up in fishing line that the crab couldn't move and that was just heartbreaking. But at the same time, well, we're here doing it and it's getting less and less rubbish around as we go, so that's really cool. How did that go, Rob? Excellent. <laughs> nah. It's so awesome to see so many people come together to make a difference and a good haul of stuff too which is great to get it out of the ocean. Well we've pulled out today literally everything including the kitchen sink so we've got uh, an old porcelain sink that's all smashed up into bits, multiple tyres, um, the usual suspects with street cones, I don't know how we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, well it must be over 20 street cones. You can see a lot of this sort of stuff in here, fairly typical fishing gear, carway lures, flasher rigs and stuff. Um, well they're designed specifically to, to entrap creatures, I mean it, it's, it's, a, it's a lure designed to catch fish and they do exactly what they're supposed to do really well. Um, so yeah even once they're in the water the, you can, we've still found um, dead fish attached to lures and stuff that have you know literally predated on the stuff on the seabed. I dive all the time and I surf as well and so you know massive passion for the ocean and so for me it's been a way to look after the ocean and give back to what the ocean's given to me. All these starfish, all these snails, all these chitons and limpets and jingle shells and all sorts of other animals, they'll all be going back to the ocean, back to our Wellington Harbour. This work is really important from a, an ongoing 
protecting our oceans for the future. Uh, marine conservation is just so key for the survival of um, the health of our oceans. We want to preserve it for future generations. Unfortunately, um, there's a lot of rubbish on the seafloor and it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. But there are sites here in Wellington that are absolutely shocking in terms of the volume of rubbish on the seafloor. We just need to get it out.